So this is the video for the shower and the toilet fit. Got the bar and mixer shower. Managed to make the shower so it does not have a shower curtain, which in time just gets mouldy and monkey. It is functional as a full wet room and I managed to get a seal on all the doors and a seal on the actual pivoting door as well. Got the Thetford C900 yes, toilet, I think it is. And yeah, this is how I went about it. So I started off the build by figuring out where I actually wanted the bathroom itself. Measured the width of the tray and then figured out how to get it in between these cross members that are on the ceiling. And then I wanted the extractor fan in the, right in the corner of the bathroom. So found out where I wanted that and then like you've just seen there I offered it up to the ceiling and just pre-drilled a little pilot hole through the up through the roof once I'd get in the centre measurement. Couldn't use the jigsaw inside because of the members are in the way so I had to do the cut from the roof so I've just put some masking tape on there and then measured the center of the actual extractor fan and measured away from the hole and then I've offered that up and just drawn a circle around. Once I've done that just put a little pilot hole through again and widen that up with a larger drill bit so I can get my jigsaw in there and then made the cut. So once the cut was complete, just neatened up any little tags or anything like that with the jigsaw and then cleaned the masking tape away. Obviously any shards of metal that had fell down then got hoovered up after this was done and dusted and then just filed any of the rough edges round with a file. Dry fit the extractor just to make sure the hole's the right size and then Give it another file down and then I used rust proof paint on any of the bare metal edges. Because my van was wrapped I removed a little bit of vinyl where the adhesive was going to adhere to the actual paintwork. Not sure whether this would have made any difference but I thought it's best practice. Once I'd put a bead of the Sikaflex around the perimeter of the extractor flange, just pressed that into place and I then pre-drilled and put a tap and screw in the four located holes. After I'd done that, just give her any of the excess Sikaflex wipe round with a wipe and a rag and then made sure all the screws are nice and tight and then proceeded to fit the mushroom vent on the top. This just had two locating screws which I used a fuzzy screwdriver to finish off. Well that was everything done for up on the roof just on the inside with the same tube of Sikaflex just put a bead around the inside of the extractor fan just for an extra seal. So guys I'm just cutting the shower tray down here as this is bit that's going to be sat up against the wall so I've got 65 millimeters here which is the size of some heating ducting that's going to be going in behind here so I'm just nipping off 30 millimeters off this side to actually put this button on here and it's taken off a little bit less than 30 millimeters but it's only a couple of millimeters difference and this makes sure I've got a nice straight line all the way across so just got the jigsaw with a fine metal bit in really fine blade and just gonna go across here and then I'm gonna take a little bit off this side as well just to save room inside of the van the main one is this bit here because 
you want the shower room protruding as little as possible into the van so let's get this cut Right folks, I'm just putting the first button on the walls here for the side of the bathroom. So I've got my button here, this is dressed timber, it is 48 millimeters by 25. So basically what I've done is on the back, so we can go against the curvature of the wall, I've just set the depth of my saw and basically cut so far through the button here so I've done that at 150 intervals down the length of the button and then I've used the Craig jig and put two holes in the top and the bottom and then I fixed the center with a straight screw so that's basically so when you push the button against the wall it just bends in there a lot easier with them relief. Right peeps, just building in the framework for the shower and just let's turn this music down. You're unbelievable. Right, just building in the framework for the shower and like I say you can see the button on the side how it goes up on a gradient so obviously you can fix in your button here at the bottom because you just want it however wide you want your wall that wants to be the distance there so I've just used the Craig jig fix that into the floor but the van isn't actually sitting on a flat gradient at the moment and it's quite difficult to be able to be sure whether it is or not so you don't know how, if this is plumb or not so basically how I've gone about it is you want to measure from the wall to the other side of the wall get your centre measurement so that's your centre measurement there and then you should already have a set well I've got a center measurement here which is the middle of this cladding these two cladding pieces but if you haven't you want to measure from this side of the top to that side of the top and put a mark on the ceiling and then basically what you need to do then is measure the distance between this mark here the center mark on the floor and the outside the outside of your button and then just mirror that on the ceiling from the outside of your baton to the center mark on your ceiling and then this baton here will be plumb. So I'm gonna get this fixed in place, ply the side of it and then this cladding is gonna be coming around the corner onto this stud wall here. Let's get it done. I'll give you a quick rundown on the stud walls, how I've done it here. So I've already explained how I've gotten this square but I've used a, the Craig jig to screw this into the floor and also done that on the top here fix these with straight this bit into straight screw straight into there and just to screw through into that beam there put a little bit of an angle cut on these bits of timber that are coming down over obviously fast bit of these for the electric wiring to come through so this is the part of the video which will show you how this back and plate and bar mix is going to sit in the wall that bit of nine mil ply that's all held in front of the screw plate is acting as the six mil plywood and the three millimeter or two millimeter upvc boarding that will be going on the wall inside the shower so that's pretty much sat where it's going to be and i'm marking where them 
holes are going down through the actual joist there. So where I'd, when I'd marked where the 90 degree BSP drops down, I put a rough mark on where the backen plate's actually going to sit. And as you can see here, I just offer up a bit of 9mm ply just to see what I'm actually going to have to pack the inside of the wall out with. 9mm plywood was about perfect in this instance, but depending on the thickness of your stud wall, you'll need to pack it out accordingly. Right peeps, I'm gonna show you how to set up this shower mixer or how I'm gonna set up this shower mixer and I'll put all these items in the description. So basically you've got whatever mixer tap that you are going to use. Most shower mixers will be three quarter BSP but they will come with adapters which I'll show you in a second. So you've got your three quarter BSP which is on the back of the shower mixer here. These are just your thread covers so I put them on uh, to measure where the back plate needs to be mounted as you might have had a might, might have seen there so basically if I unscrew this right so you've got your three quarter inch BSP there as you can see that's the front of your mixer tap and you have got your three quarter male to half inch BSP male. So that goes into your back and plate, which has got a 90 degree on it. And your half inch goes into the half inch to half inch. Obviously the, these standard mixes are at 150 centers, but this offset male to male gives you 15 millimeters play so if you have got a different to the other than the standard mixer then you can offset these so they are a little bit wider but basically when you set these fittings in I'm going to use the thread tape and this gas grade putty on the thread once you put this fitting in here you want to measure your centers and if your centers are 150 you need to make sure that these are sat at 150 because these are going to be these are going to be kept in this back and plate when you set it inside your stud wall and then once these are set in the stud wall you will fit your board over the top of the front here uh, you use a hole saw or whatever you're going to use to cut out the holes in the re required places and then when everything is cladded up and boarded up you'll fit the mixer onto these fittings at the front and then these covers will cover the, the rest of the thread up so you will always have a little couple of mil millimeters th couple of mil thread but depending on how you measure that doesn't matter you're never going to see that but yeah apart from that You've got your shower mixer, then you've got your three quarter to half, and then it comes down from your from here to your 90, and then got these half inch BSP to 12, 12 millimeter push fit, and then I'll just thread into there with the thread tape and putty also, and then that's it. You just run your hot and cold feeds off the bottom of there and you're all set. So I'm gonna get these John Guest half inch BSP to 12 mil push fit inserted into the bottom here with the thread tape and the putty. And then I'm also gonna do the same with these connectors, making sure that they're at 150 millimeter centers. And then this back and plate can be fixed into the wall. And then I can put the cladding over the top of that. And then I'm ready to put the mixer on the other side so let's get that done
Alright, that's us. So, this is now ready to put into the wall. And then, that's all we can do for now until the board and cladding's on there. So, let's get this fixed in and take it from there. So the 12 millimeter push fit pipe will just push straight into this fitting here. Just used a hole saw to cut these out and that just sits in there. No particular reason, that's just the height that I wanted to sit it at. You can just mount it up on the wall like that if you wanted to and run your pipes through that hole instead. But that's the height that I wanted to sit it at and the back plate will be screwed into the wall there. So basically there'll be ply on the actual wall and then there'll be another piece of 9mm screw to that and then the back and plate will be fixed to that piece of 9mm so that will give us the distance we want for when the ply wood goes on this side and also the cladding and then once the plywood and cladding is on you can just screw these button clip. Screw these button plates on eventually. Screw it right on as far as you can to the wall and then your mixer tap will be fixed on like so and then that's it you're good to go just need to attach your shower hose to the bottom here fix your shower riser in and then plumb it all up that's it note with these mixer taps make sure that you read the instructions as sometimes when you turn what you think is cold to direct it some people will plumb the cold into this feed here because the cold or the blue is on that side but sometimes because you push it over to that side that can close that valve off so basically make sure you read the instructions to see which, which side's hot and cold and then you're not going to get that wrong so just a bit of information on how i'm going to run the pipes here got the shower tray sat in there what i did was actually sat the original sat the shower tray up to the framework first and then i have ran the ply basically took the tray out jigged this plywood in and then i have sat the shower tray back in scribed the line on the ply work took the tray out took this ply out jigged that off at the bottom so that's actually sitting underneath that plywood there and then underneath there is just a bit of MDF which is supporting this side of the tray it's on a little bit of a slope so the water runs back into the tray and then the hot feed will run back from the boiler up the back of the tray here and then there'll be a noggin going in from here to the corner but there'll still be enough space for the hot feed to creep up this stud wall here so the hot feed will come underneath this corner here up the stud wall and then obviously up to the bar mixer so i'm going to do the same here the shower tray is snug with the frame here when i put the six mil ply on this side it'll be sat over the top of the tray and then the two millimeter PVC cladding will be going on top of that so 
yeah that's it for that i need to build a frame in under the rest of the shower tray and then build a frame for the back of the Thetford toilet and that's it for that part so i just put the toilet in there mark a line along the back and mark the line here as i'm going to put some support in just to support the plastic here and also on this side put a just going to put a strip along here and fasten it to this piece of timber here like i have here it'll be a similar sort of width and thickness i would have thought judging by the top of there and then i put a button in along the length of that to support the back there I see people putting loads of hefty frames in it doesn't seem like it needs it i'm gonna have to put a bit of ply in underneath this bit here to stop it from bouncing so much but apart from that it doesn't actually take a lot of bracing up so basically basically this is going to be the inside of the wall so what you want to do next is I'm going to be opening the toilet or the, the toilet back is going to be coming into the van I didn't want to be cutting loads of slots out the side of the van so this seals itself basically when you open it as you can see there when you push it in that, that goes comes back and allows you to do your business and then when you take it out that locks it all up so that is sealed so basically what I need to do is aside from fitting this to the inside wall which you hang it on a little bracket and I'll show you how to install that in a minute using the templates etc but when you come to the back of this stud wall I just need to make sure that the frame that I'm going to build is big enough for this to pull out of so what I'm going to do is pull it out until I can see the widest widest positions and then I'm just going to put a marker there you can make it a little bit wider than what it needs to be so I'm going to put a mark there and I'm going to put a mark there on the same side on the other side shall I say and then I'll know where to build a frame within the stud wall. What I'll do, I'll measure this for height now, and then I will know what size to build the frame for the back. And that's it for now. I'll show you it once it's all constructed. So I've just screwed this piece of 20 millimeter, sorry, 18 millimeter plywood at 89 millimeters, which is the depth of the tray. Same measurement as this, 89 millimeters. Screwed it to the button, made it 70 millimeter short. The width of the pipe's 65, so that'll fit underneath there. It'll be screwed into the floor, and then there's a gap for the pipe there. So let's get the screw. Just using the spirit level here to make sure that this button is flush with the other two struts. So just an idea of the framework. Got that along there for that side and that side. Small 18 by 18 button at the side and then just these chocks which are the same height as this bit of support here for this side so these go from around about 105 mil down to 100 mil down to the same as these which is 89 millimeters so them three chocks give the inside of this tray enough support that's obviously supporting the outside and that's going to mean when we're actually in the shower that there's no drama of cracking or crumpling the tray and it is all nice and secure all the way around so might put one more little strut out over just to support this outside edge here and that should just about do it button here is the same as this one and you just just need to measure up to suit basically peeps this this side's a little bit higher as on this tray it actually kicks up a little bit here 
as you can see there got your 89 millimeters from there to there and then this kicks up to about 110 there and that's just to support this side here so before I get this trip set in this bit here actually needs a piece of plywood cutting out and sticking to it because when you stand in the tray this depresses down to the floor so piece of ply cutting the deer into here and then we'll gunk the train and then once we've done that we can get the UPVC sheeting installed so I'm going to get the tray in now and then we'll move on to the walls stop the shower tray from depressing I used some cardboard to make a template for some plywood didn't have any 12 millimeter plywood that's pretty much what you need to use underneath here so I made two of the same template out of 6 mil and then I glued them together Once I've done that, I used some adhesive that I got with the UPVC panels that I ordered for the shower to stick it to the bottom of the tray. Right folks, just took a delivery for the PVC sheeting that is going to be lining the shower here. So I'm just going to give you a run through of how I'm actually going to go about this. I don't know whether you can see there, but that board there is already scribed in and has actually been screwed to this wall here and I've unscrewed it, tried it on this wall here and the curvature of that wall is around about the same so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer, transfer this template onto another sheet of 6mm plywood and then I'm going to add a little bit on the end to make sure that it covers this button here and then once the UPVC sheeting is on scribed down that wall cladded onto the 6mm plywood and it'll be covering this then I will build the door frame on top of that so that'll create a nice nice seal there on that board and then basically the 6mm ply is already scribed for this wall here so I'll just use that as a template and draw around that onto the UPV sheet sheeting for that wall and um, we'll get that fitting nice and snug into here so both of these walls will be fitting in nice and snug and then we will just measure up for the rectangular template for the back panel here and then that should get a nice or tight seam down both sides and then we can just run a little bead of silicon down the bottom here. I've scribed in these 6mm sheets for the roof lining here but don't stress out if there is a couple of millimetres gap at the top here. Well depending on what you're going to use, if you're using the UPVC sh sheeting then you've only got 2 mil gap but I'm actually going to be using tongue and groove panelling which is about 4 or 5 millimetres thick so you've got a little bit of play there before you get your bead of silicon on the ceiling so I'm going to start getting these templates cut up and the UPVC panelling cut out and then I will show you how I'm going to stick these on. I've just fixed that in place temporarily at the, and scribed line up the back here and I'm just going to nip this off so it's flush with this framework here and then I'll use this template and that template to cut out the UPVC sheeting and then we'll give them all a dry fit without any adhesive on and then I'll show you how I'm going to apply the UPVC sheeting with the adhesive so let's get these UPVC sheeting templates cut out and get this done Just 
putting a leak test on this bar mixer before it gets sealed into the stud wall because last thing you want leaks on these fittings here when it's in the wall so I'm not too concerned about this one on the front although it has actually sealed but that's only with a washer I'll be putting some paste on there as well but you're just checking this fitting here between the half inch BSP female and the half inch BSP male and then also the fitting between the John Guest and the, the push fit there as well so obviously you want to make sure your push fits seated full slip before you board anything in but basically got the cold feed running from the pump and then the bar and mixer tap set up with the hosing on you need to put the hose on or else you're not going to get a pressure seal so basically I've already added on the other side but once you've got it set up on one side just want to mix it up and then you can see what sort of pressure you're dealing with as well for the shower so this is also a good opportunity to find out which side the cold and the hot is going to be on so I know that the right hand side is the cold so yeah that's it for now let's get this in the wall all right so we've got it the inside of the shower as you can see the plies on the other side of this wall got the electrics running down the back of the stud here and out the front and the hot and cold feeds have just put the tees over there for the hot and cold feeds at the moment so got the hot and cold feeds coming in underneath hot runs up from there and into this bar mixer and the cold comes from through the back here so basically got where the water feed comes from comes through this T and then that goes straight through to the shower and that is going to be the feed which feeds the boiler so the cold feed goes along there to feed the tea off to the sink tap and then it goes to the boiler so the boiler will then feed the hot which will come out tea off to the sink also and then it comes back and the, up to the shower on the bar mixer there because these are the the shower and the sink the only two hot water services so basically like I advised before just sandwiched a piece of six millimeter ply in between two bits of nine just to pack that out there with this 50 millimeter button and then at the back where the bar mixer is sitting it's just one piece of nine piece nine millimeter ply and then the back and plate is just fixed to that 9mm ply it's good good fixing through there put plenty of screws in I'm gonna put screws in the rest of these holes I just need to dry fit the wall and see whether everything's in the right place and then I will secure these pipes as well to stop them from rattling about and also the electric feeds as well so yeah that's basically it got the front and half inch BSP which comes down to them fittings which I already showed you and that's where your two feeds are running off so, so just a quick once over at how the pipes uh, electric and the heating pipes are running behind the shower here so basically got the hot and cold tees there which will go up to the sink the cold feed will go off of the boiler and then this here is for the hot feed from the other side of the boiler Got the heating pipe or heating duct which is going to go into one of the heating duct outlets on the boiler got a 12 volt 12 uh, 2 core cable running up the wall here and just comes out at the top that's for the boiler sensor to sense what the room temperature is so the heating duct runs all the way along the back of the shower there and then the hot just goes straight up to the bar mixer and the cold is actually in behind there so this cable here i don't really, really see that there but let's see if i can knock that anyway that cable there where there's loads of spare 
is the comms cable for the display there on the wall for the thermostat for the boiler so we can change the temperature level and there's also just a 12 volt cable that's coming from the switchboard over there and comes all the way down this wall and then along and then through these chocks here and that will connect into the toilet for the toilet feed so yeah I'm going to cut another T into the cold feed here, T off and that's going to come through here as well and that'll be the cold feed for the toilet and then we will dry fit the toilet, we'll dry fit the shower tray and then we're going to stick it in with, stick it in with the adhesive. So, I'm going to cut this tea in now and then let's get this tray in place. So cut down your water pipe connections for your toilet as you see fit wherever you're running your feed from. And then use a cup of boiling water to get this fitting into it as it was actually quite stiff and then offered up the cold feed to where I needed to cut it, put it insert in and then connected them together. Once I'd done that it was time to put the tray in so I used the premium adhesive in any of the spots where the wood was actually going to meet the tray so on top of all of these struts and then put some circular blobs just in where it was going to meet where the tray is also sat it in place give it a good press down and then just used a rag to wipe any excess adhesive away So once I've done that, it was time to transfer the measurements for the back and plate holes for the hot and cold feeds over to the board and cut them out with a hole saw. Once I've done that, I give the board a dry fit and then transfer the holes over to the UPVC sheeting that had already been cut out cut them out on the UPVC sheeting and then fix this to the wall for the final time. Once I've done that, it was on with the adhesive and the UPVC over the top. Yeah! First board, shower board is on. It's the one with the bar mixer coming out of it. So basically gonna show you what you need to do. You've got your covers, which will screw onto the threads there. So if you want to, you can screw this on to the thread, screw it right down on this blue plastic or whatever cover you've got on there. So you've got an idea of what that actually is gonna cover. And then once you've done that, just peel back a bit of the plastic and like I've done here, you just want to, either with silicon or the adhesive that you have stuck the board on with, you want to cover or fill this hole in and make sure there's, it's well sealed, water seal on that. So I'll give you a bit of a close up on it. Give us a second. So as you can see there, Put the adhesive in, I haven't actually smoothed that round my finger, so basically you want to wet your finger and Let's see if I can get this on camera. Just smooth it round basically with your finger and then fill that other one in and once you've done that you can in this in essence fit your bar mixer but I'm gonna leave that off until we're getting this backboard on because probably will get in the way but that's that board sorted. All of the water feeds and electric feeds in this stud wall so if you've messed up at this point there's no going back so hopefully we haven't so i'm gonna get this other one filled in and then we'll take it from there no 
those peeps as you can see here just peel back the protective film from the tray just from the edges you want to keep this protected until the last minute and I've also done the same along the back here and basically just want to peel back the smallest amount you can to be able to get your PVC sheeting in because once this is sat over the top of this protective film it's going to mean you're scoring it and there's a chance you might mark the tray where you don't want to so just peel that back before you put this board in or any other board that's it so just a quick one from me as you've probably seen there on that board i was actually putting circles I've seen quite a few videos where people are just splashing it on all over the place putting squiggles the chances of this adhesive actually coming off even if you did do it like that are very slim but just a little tip when you're putting anything or silicon anything to the wall or basins when you're using pink grip or anything like that just use a circular motion and make sure there's a join in it and then basically what it does is acts as like a suction cup and it'll pull the board into the wall as well so you're not only getting the grip of the adhesive you're getting the grip of the air that's actually sealed inside of that circle so that is it for that board there and i'm gonna get this one on now and then i'm gonna get the back one on let's do this peeps so just a word of advice for anybody who's going to do a shower build you've probably watched every other youtube video that's out there and a few people say to use these tin snips do not buy these tin snips they are horrendous use a jigsaw with a fine metal bit and it'll make your life a lot easier as you will see in a second So after that ordeal, did a little bit of a fix on that and to be honest, it tardy's noticeable and then it was ready to fit that onto the wall. Fortunately that was the last piece of UPVC boarding that I had, so the little crack there as you can see where the plastic has been taken away, probably was only an inch big. and quite a clean break so now that it's in the shower you can't even tell size of the fine jigsaw bit that I was telling you about use this to cut out any of your UPVC boards it'll make your life a whole lot easier all the UPVC boards were fitted to the sides and the back started to build the framework in use 34 millimeter by 34 millimeter smooth dressed plain timber battens the only different size that I used was the 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter for where the actual backing plate was 
used a couple of 50 millimeter by 20 millimeter links here and there for noggins where I needed to get wiring up the back of or water feeds and as you can see here I'm just piecing in the framework around the back of the toilet just make sure you've got enough width to get your toilet out of that's it for part one of the shower and toilet build there will be a follow-up video for part two it's quite a comprehensive video one of the longest ones I've done yet but hopefully it goes into depth and detail so you can recreate this shower if you like so join us in the next one thanks for watching this one and see you in a bit